I promise on my name that everything here is the truth as I see it. I hope this satisfies the people who think that I might lie. There are no lies here. It would be like blinding ants to step on them. Pointless. What's the point in a wish they don't come true, yet nearly all humans have them? I thought I'd help you out with that, you know, being kind old me. Only this once. I'll tell you about the six streets, the single true way of fulfilling your wish. It's not the first time I've said it. I get a lot of people asking for, frankly, unreasonable things, so I tell them about the six streets. It's a pretty funny sight, and it's easy for me. Makes my life a whole lot easier. On that thought, I can't help but remember a little boy that came to me with a cracked lip, a black eye, and asked me for another pointless request. He was upset over his father for smashing the head of his mother, brother, and him into the wall one too many times, and wanted to end his father. I referred him to the six streets, and he decided to enter only to fail at the first street. I don't see the point in trying if you're going to fail, but after all, he did escape his father. He and about seven million others failed the six streets. It's a gruesomely difficult task, only growing more morbid, difficult, and horrifying for each street. But the wish which you so desperately want must come at a price. After all, nothing worth having comes easy. This won't scare you off. Of course, you are different, special, so to say, and your wish is more than a desire. It's something you can't live without. The entrance to the six streets is only open on certain nights. It must be a still night, no movement within sight, with a clear sky and a bright crescent moon. The gates will only be open between 2 and 3 a.m. I'd advise you to eat something. You really don't want your stomach to rumble, or it could mess everything up. Put on thick clothes that are dark, preferably black. It's going to get cold, but you also want to be able to move. A lot of people try to cover their ears with something, or bring glasses. I'd advise you against it. They'll try even harder if it's like that. As you step out of your home, you can lock the door, or not. It doesn't really matter. Time stops when you're inside the six streets. It is possible to enter with multiple people. I would warn that each mistake any individual person makes will hurt the entire group, and could lead to your death. I'll recommend you do this alone. Now, stand in the middle of your street and take a deep breath. This will be the last chance you have at turning back. Death is the best thing that will happen to you if you fail the six streets. Remember that it's completely okay to turn back. I won't judge you. If you decide to quit here, well, please stop reading. The rest of the text will be a manual on how to survive, and a waste of your time if you're not already in the six streets. Actually, let's promise each other. Say it with me. I promise that if I continue reading, I will enter the six streets. There we go. Great. Let's continue. Very well. If you've made up your mind, you may begin to walk. As you walk, it's very important to hum. It doesn't matter what you're humming, as long as you continue to walk to the other street. Once you reach that street, look up into the sky. Notice how the moon isn't there any longer. You probably wouldn't have realized this if I didn't point it out, because after all, you are a stupid, dim-witted monkey. What? You find my tone unappealing. Just like with everything else, it doesn't matter anymore. You're stuck here, and you'll almost certainly die. On the first street, you must not speak. Don't mutter a single word. If you look a bit ahead, you'll notice that there's a group of people and creatures standing in a zigzag pattern. They're all staring at you, hoping that you open your mouth and make any type of noise. Their bodies are mostly frozen. I'll be more specific for you morons. They can move their eyes and their mouth, and sometimes they can jerk an arm, but that's okay. They're weak and can't hurt you until you open your mouth. To complete this street, you must walk past them and a bit further. I warn you that it's going to be difficult. They've done this for a very long time. 
They'll try to frighten you, to convince you, to make you feel bad, or trick you. Your father is standing at the very front. Tears are streaming down his face, and his hands are spread out wide, as if he's about to give you a hug. A bit to the side, you'll see your mother, but she looks horrified. Behind them, a long creature, three meters tall with thin arms and black eyes, is standing there silent. That's their true form, and the second you speak, they'll all rush at you for another feast. Despite what they say, despite the secrets they seem to know, you have to walk past silently. They'll know that nasty thought you had and actually contemplate it, and they'll give you hell for it. Just keep in mind, don't gasp, don't burp, don't yawn, especially don't yawn. They'll try a myriad of different tricks. They'll whisper in your ear when you're about to pass, saying that it's not too late to turn back. All you have to do is say a word, any word. They're lying. Some will try to scare you by screaming, and you might feel a hand tap your arm. Don't grunt. Don't make a noise. Keep walking. When you've passed them, the first street still isn't over. Keep walking forward silently. You'll hear them crying behind you, moaning and sobbing. Don't feel bad. They don't have feelings. They're waiting for you to do something stupid. You'll be happy to know that getting eaten alive is the worst thing to happen here. It'll take a few minutes. Generally, they begin with the legs, chewing them like you might jelly beans. You won't feel too much pain. Be glad for the shock at seeing your parents bite into you. What you'll feel is a warm sensation cloaking your leg. And strangely, your leg is still going to feel attached, even if it's in the mouth of the creature. You'll lose consciousness, and then you'll just never wake up, dead at the first street, like the loser you are. You won't know when you've passed the first street and entered the second street until you hear a shrieking train behind you. This is your cue to run, full sprint away. It doesn't matter if you breathe loudly or grunt now, it's a short street and hopefully you'll pass it without many problems. It might not sound like it, but behind you is a woman, or she used to be. She wears a white dress and her hair is black. You might even see a rodent in it, in branches and leaves. Her face is completely rotten, her eyes gouged out, and her lips filthy with moss. She was the first one to enter the six streets, or rather, she was the first one to lose it. The only way of losing this street is by looking at her. If you do, she'll start giggling and laughing, but she won't hurt you. It's over for you. Soon, the street will disappear, a new one will come, and a new one after that, and after that. You're stuck in a loop until you die of dehydration, and then you'll find yourself on the street again. As she comes closer, the sound will change. Don't look back. When she's about a hundred meters away, it'll sound just like a woman shrieking. Don't look back. When she's right behind you, she'll sound like a falling missile and don't look back. She'll grab you, scratch at your body, beg and moan. She's really weak. Just keep going. You might get the brilliant, never thought of before idea to close your eyes. That's a viable strategy, but she'll realize that you're doing it. She'll let you go and her shrieking will stop and instead turn so silent that you won't hear her. You won't know when the street is over and she'll stand right in front of you, waiting for you to make the mistake of opening your eyes. Then she'll giggle. The third street isn't surrounded by buildings, but instead a forest. It'll be as if the buildings come to a halting stop, as if somebody cut through it and the rest is forest. The road will still be there, going straight through the forest. In precisely 10 minutes time, a creature will come wandering through the forest, trying to spot you. It will search for you over the span of 10 minutes. I'd advise you to hide in the forest. 
Be quick, the 10 minutes will feel much shorter than they are. There's no cheating it. You won't be able to leave this street through sprinting to the other one. You need to hide. If you opt to climb a tree, make sure to climb far and make sure it has thick leaves, one that will cover you completely. If you decide to lay down, cover yourself by bushes. You may find a small ditch and lay down in it. The creature is deaf and its smell is horrible. It's the eyesight that's dangerous. Make sure to really stay out of vision because if you don't, you'll get spotted. You need to close your eyes as well. It can feel you if you see it. It's a large creature. You'll hear it from a large distance away. It will break branches and ruffle leaves as it blunders around the forest. That's good because that means it hasn't found you. It's searching. In the beginning, well, it'll be quite slow and it'll wander seemingly at random. But after 10 minutes, it'll hurry up. The worst part is you can't see it, but you'll hear it scratch the back of its neck and you'll see the trees topple over and you'll feel the ground vibrate. And be happy for that because as long as it's moving, it hasn't found you. If it goes silent, you're done for. It's standing right behind you or below you or over you, staring right at your neck. You'll feel a disgusting itch as if small insects are eating into you. It's smiling right now. You can't see it, but it's smiling. You see, it's happy it's found you. It's not that it's hungry, but rather that it's been stuck here for who knows how long. And now you're it. You'll be stuck in this forest with that annoying itch in your back all that time until another person comes and it'll be your job to ruin their dreams. You might decide to do nothing when that happens, to sit still and let them win, to accept fate as a monster. A lot of people do that for the first few people they'll meet. But each night, you'll freeze, and each morning, you'll burn, all the while that annoying itch on the back of your neck is growing worse. You'll be completely alone. You'll feel constant hunger and a scratch at the very back of your neck. It hasn't failed to break a single person. If you pass, you'd have heard it scream at the very end. Your victory means it's pain for who knows how long. You've continued the suffering of another human. Congratulations, rookie, but be happy. You've gotten further than most people ever will. You're past the half mark. The next street will be pitch black. There's two things you've got to think about here. One, you only have three minutes. Two, keep track of where the forward is. As you walk through, You'll feel them touch you. You'll hear their breathing all around you. Don't pay attention to them. They're trying to distract you, trying to disorient you. They are 10 tall creatures with long ghost white limbs and sharp black fingers, long red tongues swirling around their bleak lips and dark feet with swamp growing on it. They can all see you perfectly. They can see your eyes staring into the darkness, your feet leading forward. They'll stay completely silent and still, staring right into your eyes. You might even stumble into one. Maybe you'll utter an apology, maybe you won't, but they won't respond. They'll still stare at you with that unkempt hatred. You'll feel the ground squish beneath you, like it's sacks of white fat. It might make you stumble, that's okay. Just keep your sense of direction. You'll feel a caterpillar crawl under your tongue, its sticky legs against the warmth of it. The fact that your tongue can't rest properly, the slight movement forward and back. Don't let that annoy you. You need to stay focused. You need to keep your sense of direction. If you lose and those three minutes run out, those silent creatures will start shrieking. You'll fall over in shock. You probably think you won't, but you will. And they'll grab you. Their cold, long hands and long fingers will wrap around your legs, and then your hands, and then your arms, and then your neck. 
It'll be almost like a snake that's been in the cold dirt suddenly wrapping itself around you. And it's squeezing. No matter how much you struggle, it won't matter. Soon their tongues will touch your skin, and they'll devour you. If you manage to keep your sense of direction and walk straight for some time, you'll be at Street 5. Spit out the caterpillar in your mouth. No, you can do it earlier. It's a keen trick made to mess with your head. You can thank yours truly for that. Remember why you came here. Remember it and really take the energy it gives you. You're close to the finish line. A bit more and it'll be over. You will have that very thing and you'll be happy. This street is the easiest one. There's a three month old baby that's a bit larger than usual with the most adorable smile and sparkly brown eyes and cute chubby legs and arms. And it's grabbing at you with its arms as if it's trying to hug you. It's on a white plate. All you have to do is eat it. At the end, when you're done, there should only be the bone and teeth left. On the final street, you'll find yourself back at the very first one. Except there's a difference. All the creatures are staring at you and they're all smiling happily. They aren't happy for you. They aren't glad that you're close to the end. They're happy because they know what happens if you lose this. The terror and hell that awaits you. They won't hurt you. Not a single one will step forward. You can speak as much as you want. Taunt them. Insult them if you want. They won't move. For the record, I'd advise you to commit suicide. Yes, everything up until now has been a waste of time. Yes, you'll go to hell, but last time I checked, it was calmer down there than usual. And it's certainly better than what will happen if you fail here. But you won't quit, will you? In the middle of the street, there's a small wooden chair. Sit on it, and you'll hear it creak and slightly bend, and you'll feel that it's slightly uncomfortable. Now close your eyes. In approximately 10 seconds, the worst pain that exists is going to befall you for a single minute. Don't open your eyes. Pain doesn't describe it properly. Imagine having to piss out a huge stone at a crawling speed or swimming through burning lava or your skin getting punctured a million times each second, or the heartbreak of finding your wife cheating, or your mother dead, and you're barely scratching at the surface. You might see shining golden eyes staring at you through your eyelids. You'll feel somebody holding your hand, and you might hear a deep, calm, mesmerizing voice telling you to open your eyes and that you've won. The pain will disappear as I say it, but don't trust me. It'll be very difficult. I am very convincing. I might even turn silent, but don't open your eyes. Wait, wait as long as you can, because if you open your eyes before the minute is over, you'll spend an eternity with me. You've done it. You've won. And there's no buts to this. No tricky genie that's deceived you. If it was power you wished for, you'll suddenly have it. If it was money, it'll be in the bank account you forgot creating. If it was love, well, they'll feel their heart jolt as they see you. If you want to send someone else to hell, they'll wake up burning. Lucy will be a bit mad over that though. See, you've probably wondered over who I am. Here it is. I am the Archangel Raphael. A few hundred years ago, things got boring and lonely for me. Somehow, I ended up lying to a human searching for my aid, and I wondered, would father be mad? But nothing happened, and I'd found my new purpose. Making humans suffer is a lot more entertaining than helping them. And there's nobody to punish me. After all, God is dead. God remains dead. You killed him. 
You can always go again. You won once, so what's to think you can't do it again? We both know you have another one. Don't be humble. You deserve it. Tell me your wish.